must be doing all right. Not so good for a good year, but not so bad for a bad year. Hello, Ed. I saw you bringing in a load of pigs the other day. How much you get for them? Not so much as I figured I might, but I never thought I would. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Uncle Ed. Hello, Jim. Think it looks like rain? Not until it starts falling. <laughs> this shop is attack this morning. Which end? <laughs> What do you think of the political situation? Well, whatever it is, I'm against it. <laughs> there you are. Thanks, Jim. Good morning, Mr. Mason. Hello, Jim. Hello, Uncle Ed. Hello, Mason. You too, eh? Me too what? Putting your cash on ice. Is that what you're doing? That's what everybody's doing. Look. 20,000 smackaroos. Black market? Oh, it all came over the top of the table. <laughs> what are you putting it in there for? Well, that's what you're doing, isn't it? Oh, no. Mine are government bonds. My dollars are out helping run the country. Looks like they expect our dollars to run the world. Not me. I'm going to be ready this time. Ready for what this time? Remember 1933? Well, what's your 20,000 smackaroos got to do with 1933? We're heading that way again and fast. Yeah? What gives you that impression? Well, the writing's on the wall. Higher prices, higher wages, money getting tighter, trouble abroad, business recession, a shrinking dollar. A dollar won't do much for a person these days. That's because a person won't do much for a dollar these days. You take a tip from me, old timer. Turn those bonds into cash and be ready. Oh, you give me a pain in the ankle. You with your writing on the wall. Why don't you come out and say what's biting you? What's that? Fear. You're afraid of your own shadow, Mason. You're scared of a lot of little boogeymen. So you're hiding your cash in a strong box. Where I can put my hands on it when I need it. You mentioned 1933. These boxes were loaded with gold then. Thousands of dollars hoarded away by panicky people. And every vault in the country was the same. Billions of dollars of gold cash put out of circulation. Locked up where it could do nobody no good. Why? Nobody knew the answer. Greed and ignorance from the top down. Mammon making monkeys out of men. Well, anyway, we had a heck of a panic and the worst depression in our history. And we've had some beauties. <laughs> You're telling me. Now, wait a minute. Don't try to brush me off. I ain't going to preach tomorrow, and I ain't going to try to tell you how the country ought to be run. 
But when you mentioned 1933, that kind of put me in mind of a thousand dollars. And what a lot of good it did to a lot of fine folks I knew right here in Silver Creek. We were in the fourth year of the Depression, and this town was deader than a mackerel. The mills were shut down, workers gone, banks closed, everybody broke. Farming, like everything else, was bankrupt in 33. So I was helping Horace Taylor run the Silver Creek Inn. Horace Taylor was a nice fellow, kind and honest, but the crash of 29 had about wiped him out. All he had left was the inn, and business was so bad, even the cockroaches went out to eat. Johnson will give you any more credit? Not after tomorrow. How are we going to eat? We won't with the prices J.J. is charging. Eggs, 20 cents a dozen. Sirloin steak, 35 cents a pound. Chicken, 21 cents. And milk, 10 cents a quart. It's like eating gold. Oh, doggone this dad blasted depression. Who started it anyway? Nobody knows. It's all a mystery. Some say financing the war by borrowing from the people caused it. Some say lack of confidence. Others say buying on credit did it. Still others blame it on our generosity to Europe. The Republicans blame the Democrats. Mm. The Democrats blame the Republicans. Management blames labor, and labor blames management. There's only one thing we're sure of. We're all broke. And I hear tell that we made the world safe for democracy. Hmm. You haven't a thousand dollars I could borrow, have you? I got a thousand dollar life insurance policy, Horace, but I gotta be dead if you want to collect it. Don't tempt me. <laughs> Horace! <laughs> Horace! Take it easy, Eve. Take it easy. You'll bust a gasket. You should have seen it, Horace. Seen what? That daughter of yours, Francine. What's she been up to now? She's just the greatest girl in the world, that's all. We know all that. What did she do? Well, it seems the widow Allen owed the bank $6 interest on a chattel mortgage, which she couldn't meet. So they sent the sheriff and an auctioneer over to sell her out. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. I thought the new president declared a bank holiday. He did. You can't take any money out of the bank, but you still have to put it in if you owe it. Go on, go on. What did Francie do? Well, when Francie got wind of this auction, she did a regular Paul Revere and a roadster and gathered up all the neighbors. Then some of the fellers put the auctioneer in the fruit cellar and Francie took over the gavel. But that's illegal. <laughs> Not when the sheriff's on your side. Bank wanted an auction and by glory, Francie sure give him one. But what did she do? <laughs> she had neighbors buy up the cows at a penny on the dollar and then they all give them back to the Witty Allen. But the auctioneer? <laughs> but she took up a collection, raised the 60 bucks that the Witty owed and paid off the auctioneer. <laughs> what a girl. <laughs> I tell you, Horace, it's the greatest thing that's happened since the Depression. <laughs> I gotta go write it up for the bugle. <laughs> Be sure and spell her name right this time. <laughs> Oh, what a girl, what a girl. Francine comes in. Tell her I want to see her. Francine was a fine girl, the apple of her father's eye. But there was a worm in the apple, a young artist named Waldo Williams. What's that for? Check from the Steiner Art Galleries. Oh, I do hope they sold your painting. Well, if they did, I'll buy you any presents you want. How's about a wedding ring? Is that a proposal? Certainly. Will you marry me? Well, you know I've said yes every time you've asked me. Well, what am I supposed to do? Set the date, too? Well, I'm still not so sure that you can support me in the manner to which I have no right to become accustomed. <laughs> <laughs> when, as, and if your paintings are recognized, we'll live in luxury. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime? Oh, well, we're living, aren't we? We are? I mean, we are. On your father, I already owe him over 900 bucks. Hello? Who? Ab Fonsby, no, he ain't here. What? Oh, you're Ab Fonsby. Say, Ab, someone had been trying to get you on the phone for the last few seconds. Huh? Oh, it was you. <laughs> How you been? Who's going to be a father? You are? <laughs> well, take it easy. Don't let it get you. Fellas like you have been becoming fathers for quite a while now. Okay, I'm listening. Man from New York? Money for you? All right, I'll, I'll tell him as soon as he gets here. Bye, Em. <laughs> Welcome to Silver Creek Inn. <laughs> what can I do for you, folks? Oh, hello, Francine. Hello, hello. Hello, Waldo, hello. Hi, Uncle Ed. Waldo, there's a letter for you. From where, New York? Uh, some art gallery. Well, Look, give it to him, give it to oh, him. Oh, now, let me see. You're in... Uh, 16. You're in... Uh... Steiner Art Galleries. Cross those fingers again. Is it, darling? Is it a check?
You know the guy who was going to buy that picture? He backed out. <laughs> he sure did, out of a 50-story window. Another Wall Street sucker. Guess you're going to have to wait a little while for that ring. I'll take the gear upstairs. I could have sworn there was a letter here for Waldo, Francine. Now you just be patient and... Hello, Dad. Hello, Paul Revere. Oh, you heard about the auction? I've heard, and he's printing it in the bugle. I had to do it, Dad. Just because the financial world has got itself all fouled up is no reason why people like Mrs. Allen should suffer. She didn't cause the depression. You're not angry. Angry? Of course not. It's great training for you. Tomorrow or the next day, you'll be doing the same thing for me. I will. J.J. Johnson will be sending the sheriff and the auctioneer over here. You're not serious. If there's one thing I am, my dear, it's serious. And I want to have a serious talk with you about Waldo. Oh, Dad, please don't be hard on Bill today. Bill? Who's Bill? Well, he doesn't like me to call him Waldo. So you won't pick on him, will you? I pick on him? How can a man who's owed the money Waldo owes me possibly pick on him? We've just had a very tough break. What happened? The picture he thought he had sold in New York. The deal fell through. Well, since that was to be my money, it seems that I'm the one who's had the tough break. I didn't take you out of Asset to start supporting him. Give him a chance, Dad. I'm owed money and I owe money. And my Yankee ancestors are spinning in their graves. Ah, the time old battle. Father against daughter. Money against love. I was betting on Francine to win. Give Bill just a little bit more time. Well, but you know how I feel about it. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Here. Oh, we shouldn't have let Aggie go. Oh, nonsense. She was always getting her thumb in the soup bowl when she served. Besides, we couldn't afford her anymore. I know. I appreciate you doing it. But must you wear this thing? I not only must, but I must. Come on, dear, get your lunch. I heard the argument. What's all the fuss about? Money. Who's got money? Waldo hasn't. That's what all the fuss is about. Well, if Waldo hasn't got any money, why fuss about it? The country can't run without money. This hotel has been running without it. Not much longer, Ed. Where is all the money, anyhow? I don't know. Bank vaults, maybe. Well, why in thunder close the banks? Money in the vaults won't do nobody no good, not even Moss. They had to close the banks to stop a panic. Uh, I don't get it. Here. Here's a quarter. I put it in the bank so it'll be safe and draw interest. Now I want to buy a good cigar. The new president declares a bank holiday. I can't get my money out. What do I do? You borrow on your credit. You got a cigar? Sure. My credit good? <laughs> Thanks. Well, maybe the government ain't so dumb after all. Just a minute, Ed. The bank you deposited your quarter in is unsound. Huh? The bank examiners won't let it reopen. Your credit is all tied up. The bank had to foreclose. Hey. Yes, sir. Honey's a funny thing. You worry when you got it, and you worry when you ain't. What was it Ab Follinsby said about a man coming up from New York with money? This'll do. Are you sure the truck will go by here, Eddie? Sure, I'm sure. This is the main road from the border, ain't it? If you say so, Eddie. Sure, we're waiting this flop joint with the truck barrel through. Pick it up on the hill south of town and escort it to New York. If you say so, Eddie. I say so. Welcome to Silver Creek Inn. <clears throat> What can I do for you, ladies? Hello, Pop. Do you mind if we use your lobby to hang around? We're waiting on a business deal. Oh. Sure. Help yourself. Uh, are you the fellow with the money? Huh? Is Ab Follinsby expecting you? Who's Follinsby? No. I guess you're not the fella. I'm hungry, Eddie. Where do we put on a feed bag, Pop? Oh, dining room's right in there. Fifty cents apiece, please. Will you keep your eyes peeled for us, Pop? We're watching for a truck, Cagliari Express Company. If they come by, buzz us, huh? I'll watch like a hawk. Thanks, Pop. Have a cigar? Don't mind if I do. Over here, Hawk. Oh.
You getting out here, Audrey? Oh, no, Mrs. Atherton. George will take me right over to the house. Remember what I told you, child. I've seen three generations of O'Connor men, and they're all alike. Irish, high-spirited, and sensitive, every one of them. You're right about that. I guess that's why I married Tom in the first place. I'm glad we had our little talk on the train. Keep your chin up, dear. Oh, you won't tell Tom about it, will you? Do I look like the kind of a woman with a mouth big enough to put my foot in? Don't answer that. Hello, Geraldine. Hi, Ed. How are you? Not as bad as I look, not as good as I feel. Hello, Audrey. It's nice Hello, to see Uncle you. Ed. Tom will be glad you're back. Oh, thank you, Uncle Ed. That goes both ways. I'll take you back. Nonsense, Ed. I'm stronger than you are. Goodbye, Audrey. Give my love to Tom. I will. Goodbye. Over the river. Over the river. around the sun? It certainly does. Oh, poppycock. Don't I see it coming up every morning and going down at night? With your brain, you ought to be a very happy man. You got a room for me? Got a room for a convention. Place full of echoes, huh? Yeah. The only guest we've got is Walter Williams, and he's on the house. I suppose you want your usual room, eh? Fine. Say, who owns that big black job out in front with the New York license plates? Looks to me like a couple of gangsters. Bootleggers? <laughs> nice fellas. They give me a cigar. We won't be seeing those boys around much longer. Beer's coming back, and they'll repeal prohibition pretty quick. Well, it suits me. Body can't sleep with those <laughs> heavy booze trucks running down here from Canada. Want to go right up? No, I'll have a bite of lunch first. Dining room open? Yeah, temporarily. Knock out. Who's there? Nona. Nona who? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, huh? Uh, pretty good, young fella. Listen. Knock, knock. Who's there? Greta. Greta who? Gret along, little doggy. Gret along. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little old timer. I gotta remember that one. But catch this. What is it? Indian riding in a V8. Oh. Uh, don't take it so hard. That got its hash box in the Civil War. Welcome to Silver Creek Inn. No, no, no. I'm not staying. My name's Peabody. Eustace Peabody, Acme Collection Agency. There's nothing to collect around here, not even garbage. And the boss has gone away. He's been away for a long while. Well, I'm not collecting. I'm delivering. Garbage? Oh, no, of course not. I'm supposed to meet a man named Ab uh, Follinsby. Have you seen him? Oh, uh, no, he hasn't been in town for quite a while. Well, he ought to be here. He's late now. I've got to get the afternoon train back to New York. Follinsby, I knew I had something to remember. Are you the fellow with the money? Don't shout it. Yes. Well, Ab told me to tell you that he'd be late. He's having a baby. His wife is. A baby? He's got a gall bringing me up here to this hole in the ground. He wouldn't take a check by mail. Well, Ab's no fool. You can't cash a check with the bank's closed. Well, what am I supposed to do while his yokel's paging the store? Now, don't get yourself in a sweat. Go in there and get yourself something to eat. Ab will probably be here by the time you get back here. Fifty cents, please. <laughs> and baby storks. <laughs> what a bird. <laughs> Silver Creek Inn. No, 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 it's me again. Look, I want to put this door in the safe till Follinsby gets here. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, yeah. Colin, give me a receipt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten dollars. Ten dollars? Those are hundreds. Huh? Hundreds? One. A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? What do you know? Just give me a receipt. Give me a receipt. Don't look now, Eddie, but your heat is showing. Thanks, Rocky. Hey, Eddie. What's on your chest? Uh, a tattooed horse. Which way is he going? Ah, oh, quit your kidding. This is serious. If they repeal prohibition, it's going to be tough on us guys. Yeah, this could be our last escort job. Hey, I got an idea. I know, a grand idea. With that grand, we could buy a racehorse. Not some dough, and you have to feed racehorses. I'm putting my dough in a legitimate business. Like what, for instance? Like slot machines, for instance. The suckers feed them. Not me. I'm not putting my half in no slot machine. All right, buy yourself half a horse. There you are. Thousand dollars. <laughs> Safe as a bug in the rug. Knock, knock. Who's there? Felix. Felix who? Felix sighted? <laughs> well, 
that's how the thousand dollars came to Silver Creek. And I was sitting there thinking how much good it could have done for Horace Taylor and Francine, and a lot of other people. Bewildered men and women marching through the streets with empty market baskets and empty hearts, banding together in futile protest against the fate which had befallen them. Twelve million willing workers made idle by the economic disaster, standing around in stunned silence, wondering what it was all about. Bread lines growing longer and longer, one third of the people threatened with starvation. Even those who had prospered yesterday were victims of the depression today, businessmen made cynical and desperate by their common plight. The Salvation Army doing all in its power to help with the few pennies dropped into its tambourines. Homeless, unfortunate, seeking a night's rest where they could find it. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. Depression camps springing up all over the country. Brothers in adversity sharing potluck. Families scattered to the four winds to lead the lives of aimless wanderers. It is a comfort to the unhappy to have companions in misery. Yes, sir. Once upon a time, that thousand dollars was a fortune. And then I thought of Audrey O'Connor and her husband, Tom. Hm. They sure could have used it. Where's my husband? Audrey? Oh, I missed you, Audrey. I thought I'd go crazy. Oh, Tom. Let me take a look at you. Four new gray hairs. You've been taking life much too seriously, my love. Well, let me see what kind of a housekeeper you are. Well, you deserve a gold medal. Ashtrays all empty. No new cigarette burns on the furniture. Dirty dishes in the kitchen instead of on the mantel. Not bad for a lawyer. Yeah, a lawyer without a client. I think you were cut out to be a bachelor. Audrey. Oh, I was only teasing. Oh, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I haven't got the right to blow up. You're earning the living. Maybe I was cut out to be a bachelor. You were meant to be the cut of my jib, and that's just what you are. So stop frowning. This isn't your private depression. The whole world's sick, so don't take it personally. That's easy to say. But this is my world, this tomb that used to be our house. Do you know what it's like alone here in the dark, only seeing you every two weeks and thinking about you and missing you so much I could... It's the same in town, but it's a job and a good job. I'm not the girl I used to be. Let's be grateful they took me back. How can I be grateful? Tom. Do you think it's pleasant to sit here and think of you parading around before a lot of men? Please, Mr. O'Connor, I'm not lonely for women. Don't make me a bubble dancer. I know it's lonely, but I'm working on a little plan to cure that. So am I. Bet mine's better. It couldn't help but be. But mine will last longer. I'm not so sure. How can you stand it, Audrey? How can you take a husband who's a failure, who can't support you? Oh, <laughs> support you? That's a laugh. I couldn't even buy myself a glass of water. How can you tolerate me? Because I'm tolerant. Why do you ever come back here? Because I love you. Hang on, darling. Remember what the new president said. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. And I heard what the old president said. We've reached the end of our string. There's nothing more we can do. I don't believe that. Somehow the world keeps going on. We have a little money. You have a little. We have. Enough to keep going. Enough to pay a few bills. Yes, bills. Bills piling up, stacking up, while I sit here helpless, not able to do anything about them. Well, if it annoys you so much, darling, let's pay them. I have two weeks' salary here. That'll take away a few headaches, huh? Let's see. We'll pay the most urgent ones and let the others wait. J.J. Johnson, let's pay that old skin flint. We have to eat. Tom! That thousand dollars kept looking bigger and bigger to me. Tomorrow, our credit with J.J. Johnson would be cut off and there'd be no more meals served in the dining room. Hip. 
Horace, you ought to be ashamed of yourself letting Francie wait on the tables like this. You don't talk to me about it, Geraldine. I wanted no part of it. It was my idea. But good heavens, child. What's the matter? Isn't the service all right? Perfect. But why doesn't Waldo pitch in and help? Waldo, that worthless... Dad? Isn't he still staying here? He's staying, not paying. Yes, but why don't you make him wait on the table? He would if I'd let him, but I want him to paint and paint and keep on painting, because that's his work and that's what he's living for. The boy does have a lot of talent. For heaven's sake, Geraldine, don't encourage her. That useless young man ought to stop daubing paint and start earning money doing something practical. And I'm going to tell him so, too. No, Horace. Remember, never take from any man his song. Got something to talk to you about. Very important. See you in a minute. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Hobart. Hobart who? Hobart, Hobart a, little... a little kiss, baby. Oh, you heard that one before, huh? It's a small town. Things get around pretty fast. Would you care to order your dessert now, sir? I sure would. What's sweet besides you? The arsenic pudding is very nice. Fine, fine. And the coffee is fresh. If it were any fresher, it would be insulting. <laughs> Babe, you're better than the Orpheum. Looks like I might be hung up here for the afternoon. It's a kind of a lonesome berg. I mean, what does a guy do for conversation? Well, you might try Marble Canyon. It's got the nicest echo. <laughs> arsenic pudding. What I wanted to say, Mrs. Atherton, you're the leading citizen of Silver Creek. I am? Yes, when you're here. And as the leading citizen, you ought to do something for the town. For instance, what? You ought to have your portrait painted. Is she kidding? Uh, why not? Not at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's an excellent idea. Can't you see me well, or is it too dark in here? Well, you are the leading citizen. You own the mills, most of the town, and your grandfather founded Silver Creek. My grandfather fell down a hole that happened to be full of high-grade marble, if you call that founding a town. We're all here today on account of him. We're all here today on account of corn liquor. <laughs> what about the portrait? No, Francie, no dice. But Waldo could... Waldo could immortalize this face of mine better than anybody. That's what I'm afraid of. Oh, but Mrs. Atherton... I avoid mirrors as it is. You'll have to get yourself another pigeon, dear. I've got some important business I'm going to tend to. Geraldine, there's a funny look in your eye. Good. I'll go over and show it to J.J. Johnson. After what you told me, I'm going to turn the heat on him. No, Geraldine. No, no please, please, Geraldine. I bet you know what I make up for The Bantan Market was owned by J.J. Johnson, a crafty, close-fisted merchant with a store full of groceries and a heart full of larceny. You heard me, J.J. Speak up. What's this nonsense about your putting poor Horace tail over a barrel? It's none of your business. I'm making it my business. Now, look here, Geraldine. You're not the only one that's got a barrel. I got a butte, a nice big one, and I'd like you to try it for size. Well, let's talk this over. Money is going to do the talking. You owe me three months' rent. Six hundred dollars, and I don't mean wampum. You know I can't pay. You can't, but you're going to. I may look philanthropic, but underneath this angel face, I'm a Uriah Heap. Kick in, J.J. Geraldine, be sensible. There's not 600 available dollars in the whole town. Maybe the whole state. Everybody owes me money. Horace Taylor alone owes me 1,200, and I can't collect. And I bet you overcharged him beautifully in exchange for that credit. Oh, I'm a friendly man. And I'm a friendly woman. Pay up or get out. Oh, what did I ever do to you? Besides, pay you more than this place is worth. J.J., it's pirates like you that created this depression. You soaked my mill hands. I had to raise their pay. You boosted prices every time I boosted wages. And every time I boosted wages, you boosted prices. A vicious circle. Prices, wages, prices, wages, till the top blew off. Well, did I control prices? When people were buying, yes. When they stopped buying, neither you nor anybody else could avert a depression. It's like a snowball going downhill, getting bigger and bigger until it's smashed at the bottom. I had to close the mills. Your customers were out of work and broke. You were charging 60 cents for a dozen eggs, and now you're begging for 20. Well, don't you suppose I took a beating, too? I hope so, and I hope you learned a lesson. Next time when we come around to a normal way of living, don't start raising prices. Oh, what do you think I am? Well, you can't grow a cherry tree out of a squash seed. Oh, Geraldine, have a heart. Sure, I'll have a heart. Yours. And that means I'm going to Tom O'Connor's office and have him draw up a writ of eviction. Don't go away, J.J. I'll be back with the sheriff and the auctioneer.
Why did you run out on me? I remembered something I had to do. Will you be long? Yes, quite a while. Then I'll have time to run over to the inn and see Francine. Go right ahead. See you later, darling. Yeah. Tom. Oh, Mrs. Atherton. Say, what's the matter with this joint? It's falling apart. I had to let myself in. There was nobody in the other office. Sorry. It was a little thing called the Depression. Yes, I sort of got that message from Audrey. Oh, you've, you've seen her? It's on the train from New York. Tom, what kind of a young fool are you? The usual kind, I guess. Don't you know you got that wife of yours worried stiff? Did she say so? Of course not. It's what she didn't say. I can read between the eyes. Look here, sonny boy. When you plucked Audrey from the bright lights of New York and brought her here to live, she was the happiest girl in the world. Don't ask me why a pretty thing like that would let you put away in that old mausoleum you call a house. But she did. And she loved it because it was your way of life, not because you were rich. And now she's working so you can still have a life together. The trouble with you is you keep living in the past. Only because there's no future. Are you kidding? Listen, Tom, this isn't the first time our country has scraped the bottom of the barrel. We had a Black Friday in 69. We had a fine little depression in 73 and another one in 84. We had a Butte in 198. And the bottom fell clear out in 29. But Uncle Sam always manages to patch up the barrel and refill it. Now, don't tell me prosperity is just around the corner. Well, maybe it is. Maybe I'll reopen the mill soon, and when I do, maybe the company will retain you again. Don't worry about me. My wife pays the bills. That's a stuffed shirt remark, and I'll make something of it when I've got more time. You gave her every luxury when you could. Fine clothes, furs, and you were proud. Well, maybe she's proud now to be doing her share. But I didn't come here for a social call. I'm here on business. Business? You mean there's something I can do? That's right. Now get your chin up on the curb. I want you to draw up a writ of eviction. Oh. On whom? J.J. Johnson. Johnson? Now don't try to talk me out of it. Well, Judge Crockett won't sign it. Oh, yes, he will. Who made him a judge? Very well, if you insist. Insist is putting it mildly. <laughs> What's the joke? Francine Taylor wants me to let Waldo Williams paint my portrait. And will you? If Judge Crockett refuses to sign that writ, I'll get the portrait and hang it in his courtroom right over his bench. Come back out of that dream world, Rembrandt. Hi. Rembrandt is right. This one ought to make me immortal. Well, you better eat while you're still mortal. All right, just a second left. Finish. You can't paint unless you eat, you know. I can't eat unless I paint, either. True. This one's for the barter system. Barter system? Yeah, a painter needs paint to paint with, and for that I get more paint. <laughs> How do you like my model? Isn't she a cutie? But lines. I wish all your models were like her. Why? They'd give you the brush off. Mm-hmm. That's quite a whisper, room, Bill. Good likeness. You like anything I do. You're just prejudiced. Remember the first painting of yours I ever saw? Yeah, it was in the Beerus Galleries in Paris, wasn't it? Should have been in the Louvre. Should have been in a pawn shop. It was a lovely painting. Stood entranced, gazing at it for hours. Mm -hmm. And up stepped a tall, handsome stranger. And well, he, said, he was tall. And he asked you what you thought of it. And I said that it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And the handsome, fascinating stranger said that he thought you were far more beautiful than the painting. He wasn't a bit fascinating, just a fresh smoothie with an American accent. Yes, but you did accept his invitation to lunch. I was a venturesome hussy in those days. Besides, I was hungry. It's a good thing for you his credit was good at that little cafe. And what was his credit good for? A luscious dish of snails. 
That was the beginning of a beautiful romance. Oh, my darling. It was a brilliant Paris. They even wrote songs about us. A rendezvous, a chestnut trees, a small cafe. In spite of your pug nose, the guy fell madly in love with you. And I with him, in spite of everything. What's wrong with my nose? Nothing. I love it. Some down. If you say so, Eddie. I say so. Me, I like horses. If I wasn't tied up with this escort job, I'd stick around and do a little pitching. Horseshoes? Welcome to Silver Creek Inn. Hello, Uncle Ed. Is Francine in? Oh, hello, Audrey. I just saw her take Waldo's lunch upstairs. Oh, thank you. Oh, um, pardon me. Well? Didn't I see you on the New York train? Yes, I was the caboose. Caboose? Hello, who? Bill. Okay, it's better. <laughs> Come on in. Hello, Audrey. How are you, Francie? Oh, I'm glad you're here. He goes out of his mind waiting for your next sitting. <laughs> well, it's just that I'm afraid I may not be able to finish it. Not finish it? It's just his pride. He owes Dad money. Oh. Oh, money. Sure, who cares about money? Forget it. Oh, yes. What's money? When I first commissioned you to do this painting, I didn't know Tom's business was going to collapse. Audrey, the, the pleasure of painting your portrait is payment enough for me. But that's not fair. Now, just a minute. You two have heard about the artist who is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. You're not going to take away my inspiration now, are you? Thank you. Ladies, we're wasting valuable time. Uh-oh, that means clear out, Francie. Well, besides, I'm not supposed to be social. I keep forgetting. Audrey, make him finish his lunch, will you? These days, you just don't send back half a sandwich with a pickle on the side. I'll make him eat it. Hey, waitress. That's for being a cute kid. Oh, thank you, sir. Nicest tip I've had today. Come on, Audrey, I'll help you dress. Fine. What a stunning suit. Oh, it's the new thing. Must have cost a fortune. <laughs> don't get the idea that I bought it. The store lets me wear these models for advertising. What a break. Are the skirts all that long? Oh, yes, that's a new style. It's quite a change, isn't it? I bought this in 1930. Yours is in 1933. By the time we reach 1940, they'll be dragging on the floor. <laughs> well, the women aren't taking to the new lengths too quickly. I love this dress. Seems prettier each time. I wore it on the very first date I had with Tom. It was always his favorite. That's why I saved it. When it wears out, will you let me have it? Mm. Sorry. I guess there's a dress in everyone's life that somehow or other represents romance. Walter just has to finish that painting, Francie. I, I want to hang it in the library so Tom will be lonely while I'm away. Then I'll always be with him, just as I was the first time he saw me. And you'll always be lovely to him, Audrey. But I know what you mean. Don't worry, we'll get the picture finished somehow. I think Bill feels just as you do about it. And he's put his heart as well as his soul into it. That's why it means so much to him. It's as if you were telling Tom what's in your heart in that painting. Tom needs to know, and I can't seem to tell him. It's funny. Here we are, both of us working, trying to help out. Anybody would say this is a tough time for women. I don't agree. It's much worse for men. Especially sensitive, proud men. You haven't told your father? Huh? Strictly a secret among the three of us. I want it to be a complete surprise for Tom. To cheer him up, though, I'm afraid it'd have to be a Gainsborough. Oh, Waldo Williams, please. Let's ride out and take a gander at that hill. Hey, that's a hunch. Lord Gander's running the third. You're getting to be the smartest moron I've ever met. Thanks, Eddie. Say, by the way, sister, where is Marble Canyon? One mile east, then follow your echo. All right, I'm glad you can go to lunch. Thank you, Horace. This might be my last. Look who's coming. Hey, Follinsby, Ab Follinsby. Who, me? My name's Johnson. Horace. 
Horace. Oh, uh, hello, J.J. Don't give me that stuff. Well, what's the matter? Less words and more action, Horace. The time has come to put up or shut up. I'm not fooling. I want the money you owe me, and I want it right now. And I haven't got it. I've got to have it, Horace. I don't like to push you this way. It isn't as if I wanted it all. Just half, right now, that's all, just half. But it's impossible. I've got to have it, Horace. Gr Geraldine Atherton is putting the heat on me. I owe her $600 back rent. If I don't pay up, she's going to evict me. I knew it, I knew it. I'm terribly sorry, J.J., but... I, I don't want your sympathy. I want your cash. Come on, Horace. You know you've been hoarding funds someplace. Drag out the sock. Dig up the old tin can, but pay me my dough. Pity sake, J.J., I tell you, I'm flat broke. I haven't got a dime. Horace, I'm warning you. If you don't slip me $600 right now, today, I'll get rough. I don't like to pull this on you, but so help me, it, it's sink or swim. If you don't pay me today, right now, I'll put Silver Crick in under the auctioneer's hammer before you can say ouch. Please, J.J., don't do a thing like that to me. I'd like to help you, but uh, just I... Just $600, not the whole debt. Six hundred's no fortune. It isn't. Well, you've got at least that much. Ten dollars would be a fortune to me. Horace, look. We're old friends, aren't we? Hmm? Huh? We're old friends, aren't we? Well, we've known each other a long time. Well, I gave you credit when you needed it, didn't I? Fair credit at fair prices? You gave me credit. Horace, Horace, please. We're friends. Just for me. Just six hundred dollars. I haven't made any demands. I, I, I know you're making money. A cash business, maybe saving it. To... Saving what? I made six dollars and a half yesterday, and and today a dollar and a quarter. Not, not enough to pay the cook. Oh, don't give me that. Look at that safe. I'll bet you it's loaded. I'll bet you it's ripe with cash. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in that safe but dust, and I'll show it to you. Do you remember the story about Mother Hubbard? Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her poor dog a bone. And when she got there, the cupboard was... Old Mother Hubbard's cupboard, eh? Hey? <laughs> Hand over that bone, Horace. I don't understand. I was telling the truth. You rascal, you. Holding out on an old friend. So help me, J.J., I... Waldo. Never mind who. How much? It's Waldo. The art gallery must have sold a picture after all. And I've misjudged the boy. Look here. How much? How much? One, two, three, four. Uncle Ed should have told me something about this before. Five, six, seven. And here I've been badgering the poor boy. Eight, nine, ten. Oh, ho, a thousand dollars. We're square. But I owe you twelve hundred. I'll cancel it out for cash. We're even. You can have all the credit you want. Oh, boy, will I tell that old man that's a thing or two now. <laughs> We're even. Ancestors, you can stop spinning now. <laughs> Waldo. Waldo, my boy, my son. Waldo. 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 Just a minute, uh, please. Waldo, my boy. Thank you, thank you. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Sometimes it's a little difficult for an ungifted man like myself to appreciate an artist like you. You, you, you must be a little understanding with me, my boy. Well, I didn't expect anything quite like this. Now, I want to give you a dinner. We've got to celebrate. Youth and talent should be sponsored and not smothered. I want you to know how proud I am of you and your painting. And I think my daughter is one of the luckiest girls in the world. Awfully glad you think so, sir. Oh, you're going to make a happy couple. Yes, indeed, and I'm going to show you how proud I am of you. Oh, my boy, this is a happy day, a happy day. Um, you know, let's see what you're doing. Oh, uh, no, no, Mr. Taylor, a painter has to have oh, privacy. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand, yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, well, then you get right on with your work. Here, uh, have a cigar. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you later, son. <laughs> Take a look. A good look. How do you like them apples? Had me over a big barrel, eh, Geraldine? Well, it had weak staves. Oh, you can tear up that writ, Tom. Tear it up and write me a receipt for $1,000. Uh, well, count it, Tom. I still don't believe it. $1,000, genuine, guaranteed coin of the realm. 
The real thing. No imitation. J.J., where'd you get this money? Oh, I don't consider that any of your business. That's right. A thousand dollars. Well, give him a receipt. And if he's robbed a bank... Uh-oh, they're all closed, madam, remember? Well, then you took it off of a dead body. I'll have the police examine it for bloodstains. Oh, is that so? Well, while you're doing that, Geraldine, remember this. The back rent is paid, and there's an advance payment there. And if you set foot inside the Bon Ton market within the next eight weeks, I will have the personal pleasure of heaving you out on your ear. Thank you, my boy. It's been very nice. I trust that you remember me, if I never see you again sometime. I never forget a face, and I'll always remember both of yours. Ah, I... Well, I guess that's that. saying before, a man like you, with your background and your mind, has no right to feel bitter about his wife's working. Marriage is a 50-50 deal, and when one can't carry the load, the other must try. A man has his pride. So has a woman. What if Audrey felt the same way that you do? How would you feel when you came home with this, if she were to resent it because she hadn't earned it? And incidentally, that is yours. Mine? Yes, it's retainer on your services. Now, in the future, we've got to start thinking about reopening the mills. There'll be a lot of paperwork, reorganization, heaven knows what, with this new administration. I'll check with you from time to time. But Mrs. Atherton, I... I know, I know, it isn't very much, but it's all I can afford right now. We'll increase the amount as we get active. Bye, Tom. My love to Audrey. <laughs> Little brown jar getting in love thee. <laughs> oh, oh. You sound as spry as a kitten, Horace. I thought the tapioca pudding was a mite heavy myself. Ed, you old rascal, why didn't you tell me before? About the tapioca pudding? About the money. What money? The money, the money in the safe, the thousand dollars. Oh, that money. Well, don't make it sound as if it was only five bucks. Don't you know how important it was to me, what it meant to me? A thousand dollars. Well, that's all right, Horace. I, I give the young fellow a receipt for it. <laughs> oh, I don't give a hang about the receipt, but the money. I needed it so desperately. And when you saw the... What young fellow? Why, the fellow that brought the money. Waldo, you mean. Waldo? Waldo. Waldo Williams. He owed me $970 and he, he paid me. He did? Didn't he? You feeling all right, Horace? I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you, I'll tell you when you answer this question. Did Waldo Williams give you $1,000? No, no, it was a fellow by the name of Peabody, Eustace Peabody. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Why, you think I was absent-minded or something to hear you talk. He brought the money for Ab Follinsby. Only Ab Follinsby was about to become a father and couldn't be here. That's all. So the man got excited and I put the money in the safe. Oh. What's the matter? Is that tapioca pudding bothering you? Not Waldo's money. That means it wasn't mine. And that means... No, take it easy, take it easy. Take it easy, he says. It's all right, it's all locked up. I spun the dial. There's nothing to worry about after all. What's biting Horace? I don't know. I'll have to talk to Francie about her pa. He's getting senile or something. I never heard of such a thing. I can't believe it. Horace, it's awful. It's terrible. I, I knew you'd understand, J.J. Why, it's a catastrophe. Horace, they, they could put you in prison. Prison? It's a criminal offense. Misappropriation of funds. And the funds belong to somebody else. Yes, yes, it's that, that's true. Oh, the disgrace of it. Poor Francie. Think of what people would say. I can't. I only thank heaven for a friend like you at that time like this. That's the spirit, Horace. A stiff upper lip, chin up, and face the world with a friend at your side and a pure heart. Thank you, J.J. I knew I could count on you to give me back the money. The money? Yes, the thousand dollars. Give it back? 
Yes, you see, if I can get it back into the safe before that Peabody fella comes back. Really, Horace? Oh, what's the matter? Well, don't you think it'd be imposing on a friendship to ask for money in times like these? But that's what we're talking about, the money. It isn't mine. I gave it to you. It isn't yours. It's Peabody's. Are you trying to imply that I stole those funds? No, no, nobody stole the funds. It's a mistake. It's an error, but I gotta get the money back. Please, J.J. Well, I'd be glad to help you out, oh, Horace. Thank heaven. <laughs> but then don't frighten me like that. Only I haven't got the money. It's too hard on my nerves. You haven't got the money? Well, of course not. I told you Geraldine Nathan was going to throw me out. I had to pay her every cent of it. Oh, Horace, get a grip on yourself. <laughs> the hotel, my ancestors, the safe, the money, Peabody, Waldo, Mrs. Atherton. Mrs. Atherton. A known fact, Ab. Yeah, the first one always takes a long time. All right, I'll tell the man. Don't you worry. Welcome to Silver Spring Inn. Only the fact that I'd wind up in the electric chair prevents me from killing you. Oh, Horace, you ain't right. You ain't feeling right. You ain't... I'm going mad. I'm going stark, staring, raving mad. And when I do, you'll be the first person that I vivisect. Now, that ain't a kind thought. What did I do? You didn't tell me about the money. Oh, yes, I did. It's all right. The money's in the safe. You got nothing to worry about. Don't you understand? Don't you know how it happened? You put the money in Waldo's envelope. I took it out and gave it to Johnson, and Johnson gave it to... Oh, you shouldn't have done that, Horace. It's unlawful to give away other people's money. But I didn't know it wasn't mine. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You put the money in Waldo's envelope, and I thought he'd paid me. Oh. Now do you see? Oh, yes, it's terrible. Oh. Waldo certainly had a lot of gall leaving that envelope around, didn't he? But Waldo didn't. Waldo. <laughs> I wonder what's disturbing Horace. Williams! Williams! Just a minute, Mr. Taylor. I'll be right there. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Hello. Don't hello me. Goodbye me instead. You're through. Finished. Fired. No, not fired. You're out. Evicted. You pack your bags and get out of this hotel. You've got no credit, no room, no nothing. I wouldn't let my daughter marry you if you were the last man in the world. And if you were the last man in the world, you'd still owe somebody money. If you're not out of this hotel by tomorrow morning, I'll shoot you on sight. Horace, for heaven's sakes, what's all the hullabaloo about? Geraldine! I was trying to take a beauty nap, or a nap, anyway. Geraldine, I've got to talk to you. You're not making Indian signs now. The money. Whose money? Uh, my money. I mean, Waldo's money. I, I, I mean, the money I thought was Waldo's. Far be it for me to commit you to a loony bin, but your train sounds like it's off the track. Geraldine, did J.J. give you a thousand dollars? He did. I gave it to him. You did? Well, where'd you get it? From the safe, where Waldo put it. I thought. You thought? Only he didn't. I thought he did. I took it by mistake. Horace, if you're trying to get that money from me, you're working the wrong side of the track. Oh, Geraldine, have mercy. I don't mind if I do, but I haven't got the money. I gave it to Tom O'Connor. O'Connor? Oh, my gosh. Well, he might lend it back to you at a fair rate of interest. You think he would? Maybe I could. Oh, Dad, I was... How do you do? Charmed, I'm sure. How goes it? What's eating you two? Waldo says he can't finish the picture. Can't finish it? Oh, Waldo, you have to finish it. I can't tell you how much, how very much it means to me. And to Tom. And to me too, Audrey. That's the best thing I've ever done, but what can we do? You heard what Mr. Taylor said, clear out by morning. What is all this? Your father, Francie, he foreclosed. He can't do that. He not only can, but he did. Now, you're going to finish that painting. Come on, Audrey, get back into your dress. Oh, I can't now. I have to hurry and shop for Tom's dinner. Can you come back after dinner and pose? Sure, I can do that. All right, we'll try it after dinner. About eight. Good. Al, you better tell me just what happened. Oh, Francie, I don't like to mention this, but sometimes does your dad go off the deep end? Oh, darling, he has a lot of worries. He just gets excited. Well, I don't get it. First, he comes tearing in here and says, Blessings on you, my children. Blessings on you, Waldo. You're a great guy. Next thing I know, back he comes with his fist in my face. I can never see you again, and he's going to shoot me on sight. 
<laughs> Don't worry about him, honey. I can handle him. No, Francie. You bossed him into supporting me for too long already. He's been mighty patient for six months, and I don't blame him for being fed up. It's time I cleared up. Well, all right. Let's see now. Where can you go? <laughs> you should have heard where your father told me to go. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I know. Audrey and Tom's. They oh, have a big house. Will you use that pretty head of yours for a change? There's no money in this town. I have to sell paintings, so logical conclusion, I go where people buy paintings. All right. How long have I got to pack? You're not going. Oh, yes, I am. Have you ever ridden the rides? No, not, not yet. I don't intend to let you start now, either. Well, what if I... Look, you should know by this time I'm a very stubborn guy. You're not going, and I'm not coming back until I can pay our way. Well, how long does that have to take, these folks? I don't know. The way things look right now, it may be some time. Well, hello again. Hey. What's this? An ass making an ass of himself. Yeah, that's it. Welcome to Silver Creek Inn. Save it, old timer. You'll wear it out. Oh, it's you. Say, what's the matter with these Vermont women? Just ain't enough of them, that's all. Well, they sure are a cold lot. Well, you gotta light a match before it'll burn. Now, you take New York gals. Oh, no, I'll take a Vermont girl every time. Their heads may be as hard as marble, but their hearts are just as soft as the feather beds they sleep in. You lived here all your life? Not yet. <laughs> well, what do you Vermonters do for excitement? Raise more corn. You're supposed to ask me why. All right, Mr. Bones. Why do you raise more corn? To feed more cows. Why? To get more milk. Why? To make more money. Why? To buy more land. Why? To raise more corn. Why? That's enough, young fella. <laughs> Thanks, son. Ain't been able to pull that since the tourist trade fell off. <laughs> Say, what about this Follinsby? Isn't he ever going to show up? Oh, he just telephoned. He told me to tell you to keep calm. What does he mean, keep calm? I guess that's what the doctors have been telling him. I got a half a mind to take the dough and blow back to New York. Okay. If that's the way you feel, it's your money. Oh, 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 oh. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no. Now, don't go off half cock. Ab needs that money, seeing as how he's going to become a parent and all. Now, you just go over there and sit down and make yourself to hum. If that guy doesn't show up pretty soon, I'll make myself to hum on the southbound train. Tom! Hello, Audrey. Mm, that's more like my husband. Uh, what's the idea of coming home so late? Don't you know a fellow misses his gal? Why, Tom? Now, you've been gone quite a while, you know. Well, I had to do the marketing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is all this? Oh, what? All this hocus pocus. Is something the matter? Mm, nothing, nothing. Uh, that outfit isn't yours, is it? You know very well it isn't mine. Well, turn it back to them and buy yourself a new one. And while you're about it, buy yourself a new bonnet. I always say there's nothing better for a woman's morale than a new bonnet. Oh, really? And get yourself a couple dozen pairs of silk stockings, too. You've got nice legs in silk stockings. And some uh, lacy things, you know. Do you feel all right? <laughs> Never felt better in my life. You haven't been visiting the local speakeasy. Mm -mm. Then uh, where are we going to get the money to buy all these things? Money? Oh, 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 money. I, uh, imagine this will take care of things for the present. A thousand dollars? Mm-hmm. Oh, darling, you haven't done something foolish. I sure have. Where did this come from? <laughs> I'm a lawyer, Audie, remember? I'm a counsel at law. Well, I'm counseling at law again. That's a retainer. A retainer? Mm -hmm. I did a job for Geraldine Atherton. The uh, rest is just an advance. She's thinking of the future. And the mills may be reopening again. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Oh, the future. I'd begun to believe there wasn't any. Hey, you know what we're going to do? What? We're going up and over the border and celebrate. We're going to have a terrific dinner, a party, and a lot of good Canadian spirits. Oh, that's great. I'll wear my... Oh. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, we can't go. Oh, why not? Well, I... I promised Francie that I'd come over and talk to her tonight after dinner. Well, say, what is this? What's Francie Taylor got to do with us? Well, it, it's, it's Waldo Williams. She's so very much in love with him, and Horace is objecting. It's pretty rough. Oh, what's biting Horace? Waldo's a nice guy. All right, if you say so. 
What the heck? We've had our good luck. Maybe you can bring Fancy a little, eh, darling? We'll celebrate tomorrow night. Oh, I love you. Uh -uh. Ooh, I'd like to stay, but my husband's expecting me to cook his dinner. Well, what's he got that I haven't got? I hate that guy. Why? Every time I get any place with you, he interferes. Uh, that's life. Back to the kitchen, slave. Stick around. We may be able to get rid of him. Hello? Oh, hello, Horace. After dinner? Yes, I'll be here. But can't you tell me what it is? No, no, Tom. I'll tell you when I get there. Please cheer up, Dad. Why? Oh, I just know that everything's gonna be all right. If you tell me it's always darkest before the dawn, I'll wait till the living daylights out of you. Why didn't you tell Tom what you want? On the phone? It's a party line. You might as well put an ad in the bugle. Keep your fingers crossed, Dad. <laughs> You're a little late. Gee, Eddie, look. Lord Gander run out of the money. I'd have lost me shirt. You'll lose your neck if that truck don't show up soon. It ain't my fault. I don't set the timetable for the trucks we're going to escort. Ah, yeah, shut up. You say so, Eddie. Francine? Hmm? What? Penny for your thoughts. Uh-uh. Too cheap. They're worth 20 years in Sing Sing. What? If only they had cracked the safe and stolen the thousand dollars. They? Who? What do you want them to rob us for? If they had, Dad wouldn't be in trouble. Well, there's nothing in it. But there isn't. I know. But if they had cracked the safe, if they thought the money was still in there. Now it's too late. There really was an echo in that canyon. Oh, I'll bet you enjoyed talking to yourself. Yes, it'd be nicer if you... Go get your dinner, Ed. I'll get mine later if I ever get my appetite back. They say they set a good table down at Windsor. What's at Windsor? State prison. <laughs> Two dinners. That'll be one dollar. If you see a big truck go through, let us know, will you, boss? Oh, sure. I haven't anything else to think about. Did you get the money, Horace? Shh. What's the matter? Afraid the termites are cups in disguise. Do you gentlemen mind if I join you? Sure. Sit right down and take a load off the floor. Thank you. I just hate to eat alone. Me too. Nothing like a lady for dinner. Me, I like dinner. Rocky. He likes horses. Me, I like horses too. Yeah? Yeah. Where would Lady Godiva been without a horse? Lady Godiva? What track is she running at? In the epidermis handicap at Coventry. Thank you. Oh, good evening, Mr. Peabody. Wish I could say the same. Here. For the dinner. Thank you. Everything all right? Oh, I'm fed up to here with this one, Horsberg. If Follinsby doesn't show up before the 9.30 train for New York, you can tell him he's out of luck. Oh, and now, Mr. Peabody, Mr. Follinsby is usually a very punctual man, but you know how it is becoming a father. How would I know? I'm not married. Uh, well, believe me, it's a very trying ordeal. Uh, I remember when I was... Uh... All I know is I was supposed to give him a grand this morning. He didn't show up. In fact, the more I think about it, why should I wait for him? Why should I grow old in this graveyard? Oh, I'm getting out of here. Uh, Mr. Follinsby needs that money very badly. Not as badly as I need to get back to New York. Well, come on, give me the cash. The cash? Yes, the cash, the guilt. It's in the safe, thousand bucks. The old coot put it there. Oh, the, the, the cash? Oh, um, um, yeah, yes, Ed, Ed told me all about it. Well, uh, uh, big pardon? How about it? How about my money? <laughs> the money? Uh, well, that's what I... Uh, <laughs> it's really very embarrassing, but as a matter of fact... Now, I, look. Let's keep it simple. There's the receipt. Now, make with the money. Uh, well, that's what I was trying to tell you. Uh, the... <laughs> Isn't it ridiculous? 
It's getting to be, yes. <laughs> I mean, about me uh, being the owner of the hotel and, and not knowing the combination of the safe. You mean you don't... Oh, there, there's nothing to worry about. The clerk knows the combination. All right, I'll get him. Uh, no, no, Mr. Peabody. Look, it's, it's humiliating enough for me not to know the combination of the safe. But it, instead of having to send you on a, on a minion's errand... I don't mind. I'd like to take another squint at that nifty little waitress. Uh, I, I'll get her. I, I mean him. You stay right there. You, uh... What's the idea? You got something in your eye, Eddie. He wears it well, doesn't he? Ed, you've got to get out of here. Get out of where? Peabody wants his money. I told him that you were the only one who had the combination to the safe. Go into the kitchen. Hide there until I give you the word. But I didn't have my dessert. Oh, there's plenty left. If he sees you, I'm sunk of fancy. Get him out of here. Well, you can't hide him forever. That Peabody will just wait. And chances are, if he waits too long, he'll just send for the sheriff. Time. That's all I need. I've got to see Tom O'Connor. Well, go on, Uncle Ed. But it's rice pudding, and you know I like pudding. It agrees with me. Uh, hurry, hurry. There's a whole pan full of it on the stove. Francie, Francie, you've got to do something for your father. You've got to make a great sacrifice. Anything, if it'll help. You've got to vamp Mr. Peabody. Now, wait a uh, minute. Nothing serious. Just get him out of the hotel. Take him for a walk. Take his mind off money. Just give me a chance to see Tom O'Connor. I did say anything, didn't I? <laughs> yes. All right. But if it was anybody but you... Bless you, Francie. All right, go on to the desk. I'll be with you in a minute. Hiya, beautiful. I've been waiting for you. Everything okay? Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You got the combination? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, no. What? Now, don't get excited. There's nothing to be excited about. Nothing. There's a thousand bucks to get excited about. And it's quite safe and sound, right in here. And I want to safe and sound right in... Oh, excuse me. Maybe you didn't hear me the first time, but I'm getting out of here. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a, a slight delay. Never mind the delays. I'm getting that 930 train for New York. Get, get some nitro. Get a locksmith. Get my dough out that of there. That won't be necessary. No, um, yes, Francie. I think I'll go for a little walk now, Daddy. Do you mind? Uh, well, now, daughter, you know I don't approve of you going out after dark alone. Oh, Daddy, I've been in all day. Yes, yes, I know. But, of course, if you could find somebody... Say, I think a little walk would do me good if it's company you want. Well, now, Mr. Peabody, that's very nice of you. Yeah? Okay by you, Mr. Uh, 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 Taylor, uh, Miss Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Peabody. That's very sweet of you. Yeah? I thought you put the chill on me. Oh, however could you think that? I just don't want to put you out. I'll have that little matter attended to by the time you get back. All oh, right, Bob. See you now. For heaven's sake! Is the post clear? Yes, come on, come on. Watch out for those termites, Horace. How do you spell Coventry? With a K. Now, you watch the desk and keep your mouth shut. And if you see Peabody before I do, you faint. Go unconscious, anything. I never fainted in my life. You'll faint if you see him, or I'll see that you faint permanently. <laughs> I'm afraid my Boston ancestors wouldn't approve. Thanks for the laugh, boys. Good night and good luck. Good night, lady. If you're ever short of a snort, give me a call in New York. Thank you. Good night. Good night. It was me got Horace in this jam, and it was up to me to get him out. Then I thought of a plan. Say, say there, you fellas. Come here a minute. Will you do me a favor? Sure thing, Pop. Will you watch the desk for a while? I wouldn't ask you ordinarily, only you see, there's a thousand dollars in the safe. In cash, and I'm supposed to guard it. Go right ahead, Pop. Me and Eddie will watch it just like it was our very own. Well, that's right neighborly of you. I'll only be gone a minute, maybe longer. That thing is a cracker box. It was built in 1890. Yeah, I used to crack that model twice a week when I was learning the business. Gee, Eddie, I bet you was a beautiful safe cracker. Not bad, if I do say it myself. Is it hard to open? Yeah, not as hard as opening a pack of cigarettes. A thousand bucks, huh? Hey, Eddie, could you learn me how to open a safe? Depends on your touch. Well, go ahead and open it just for fun. For fun? Well, then, for a G. Yeah, but the thing is, Pop kind of put us on our honor. Yeah? What's that? You got a point there.
It's all in the touch of the fingers. No, you don't, Rocky. What's the idea? Like I said, the old man put us on our honor. Yeah, but I don't get it. It's like giving your word. And when you give your word, it's like giving your bond. See? Yeah. When you give your word and your bond, you can't double-cross a pal. You can't? That's what I said. It's like honor among thieves. It ain't ethical. We should break our word of honor. You understand? Yeah, I Good. get it. Well, what's that got to do with us breaking open the safe? Okay, if you say so, Eddie. I say so. I've got to talk to you. Oh, hello, Horace. Uh, I couldn't explain over the telephone party line. It would have been all over town, you know. Quite a story about Francine and the cattle. Yes, Tom, listen to me. I'm listening, Horace. I'm in trouble. I'm in awful trouble. I've done a terrible thing. Well, you better come into the house and tell me all about it. Yes. Yes, well, you see... No, 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 I can't go. I I've got to get that money. What money? It wasn't mine. Don't you understand? It wasn't mine. And I thought it was. And that's why I gave it to J.J. Now, take it easy, Horace. Let me get this straight. You owe Johnson some money... And you paid him with funds which didn't belong to you? That's right, that's right. And I've got to get that thousand dollars back. But you were not aware that the funds you transferred did not really belong to you? No, they belong to Ab Follinsby. Oh, does Ab know that you uh, misappropriated? They don't use the word like that. No, Ab doesn't know anything about it yet because the money hasn't uh, exactly uh, reached him. Uh, you see, it belongs to a fellow by the name of Peabody. Now you're not making sense. If you want me to help you, Horace, you've got to make sense. Now tell me the truth. Look, the money was in the safe. I thought it was mine. I took it. No intent to steal, no intent to defraud. Only an intent to pay my debts. It's a difficult case, Horace. A very difficult case. Ipso facto, no proof of criminal intent. Don't say criminal. Look, Tom, you've got to help me. I've got to get that money back. I'll pay you anything. Don't worry about a retainer at this time, Horace. I'll do all I can to help you. Now, as your lawyer, the as first thing... As my lawyer? Yes. The first thing we must do is to prove that your assumption the money was yours is valid. Otherwise, the district attorney... District not... attorney? What are you talking about? What's the matter with you? I don't want a lawyer. I don't want a district attorney. All I want is the money. I need that now money. Hang on to yourself, The Horace. money, the money. I got to have that thousand dollars. I gave it to J.J. He gave it to Geraldine. She gave it to you. I've got to get it and put it back in the safe. Oh. Oh, he says. Tom, for oh, pity's sake, I've got Well, it. I'm terribly sorry, Horace. I misunderstood you. I'd be glad to help you out. Oh, thank heaven. I'd really be glad to if I had it. It sounded like you said, if you had it. I did say so. Audrey's got it now. Oh, no. I just gave it to her only a few minutes ago. Why don't you ask her for it? She couldn't possibly have spent it. Shops are all closed. <clears throat> where, where, where is she? She went to the inn to see Francie. To the inn? To see Francie? The thousand dollars at the inn? Horace, Horace, oh. take it easy. <laughs> Knock, knock. Who's there? Francie. Francie who? Francie meeting you here. <laughs> Brother Peabody, you're killing me. Oh, hello, Tom. Francie, where's Audrey? Audrey? You heard me. Now, wait a second, brother. You keep out of this, Francie. Uh, why, I, I haven't seen her. Well, she said she was going over to see you. Oh, my gosh, I forgot. I must have missed her. I'll get right back to the end. Say, who's Audrey? See that good-looking dish I saw going in that guy's room a little while ago? Oh, shut Which up. guy? Now, wait a second, brother. I'm a stranger here. I don't know from nothing. Which I... guy? Well, the, the, the artist, Williams, I think his name is. Uh... Is Audrey with Walter Williams? Then now, Tom, listen to so me. So that's why you're out with this. <laughs> Tom! Hey! Oh, shut up! Welcome to Silver Creek. Where's Audrey O'Connor? Home, I reckon. She's not home. I just came from there. Tom said she was here. Well, I ain't seen her. Maybe she went by when my specs were up. Maybe she's out with Francie. Francie's out with that Peabody fellow. Oh, she must be hard up. If they come back, you tell them I'm out. Stall them off. I've got to find Audrey O'Connor if I have to telephone everybody in town. Well, now. Well, that just about does it. I hope Tom likes it. Oh, he'll love it. It's chilly in here. Wait till I swing it around. you get a better perspective. Welcome to Silver Creek. Where's Waldo Williams' room? Oh, Tom, how's Audrey? What's the number of Waldo Williams' room? Number 16. Good night. Tom, wait! Tom, Tom, don't you go in there. You'll spoil the surprise. Tom. Hello, Tom. 
surprise, eh? Oh, Tom, are you out of your mind? Bill. You didn't have to do things this way, Audrey. Hooray, you're jealous. Look. It's all yours. We just finished it. You mean this? That's the little plan I had to cure your loneliness. Audrey, it's... It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Now I'll always be with you. Mrs. Anderson was right. I've been a fool. You go right on being a fool. Wake up, Bill. Waldo! Waldo. I'm terribly sorry, Patsy. Oh, it's all right. It's all right, old man. I can't thank you enough. Not in a thousand years. Thanks. Thanks, pal. Maybe it's me that's crazy. Oh, <laughs> Phil. Your painting is really lovely. Isn't it wonderful? You're a great artist. Oh, no. Not, not right now. Maybe later, perhaps, but... No, now. That's right. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> Do you really think so? Well, I'll be running along, Horace. All right, Ed. Good night. Come on, somebody. Hand it over. Oh, there's something I wanted to tell you, Horace. Tell him to give me a grand. Oh. Oh, hang it all, I can't remember a word of it with him interrupting all the time. Well, it probably isn't important. Only thing is, it was important. I'll say it was. Well, you'll remember tomorrow. You can tell me then if I'm still here. Only thing is, I hate forgetting. Folks will be saying I'm getting old. I wish getting old was the only thing I had to worry about. I don't worry about it. If I don't get old, I'll be dead. Now, you get a hold of a good criminal lawyer, Horace. Hold everything, Taylor. Uh, uh, something, Mr. Peabody? I'm blowing out of town. Give me that dough. Ah, but uh, what about Ab Follinsby? I'm getting the 9.30 train for New York. And if Ab Follinsby doesn't like it, he can lump it. Watch your language, Mr. Peabody. Give me my dough. Give me my dough. I will not. What? I will not turn over that money to you. It belongs to Mr. Ab Follinsby. He's a friend of mine and I... Horace. Ab Follinsby. Follinsby. Horace, uh, congratulate me. Have a cigar. I'm a father. Myra just had twins, twin boys. Uh, have two cigars. Uh, uh, congratulations. Mm. Twins? Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, saves time. Boys, girls? Of course. So what else would you expect? Uh, are you Follinsby? Is your name Ab Follinsby? Here, young fella, take it easy. I'm the one that just had twins, not you. I mean, my wife. You are Ab Follinsby? That's me right enough. My name's Peabody, Acme Collection Agency. I've been hanging around this hole in the ball all day waiting for you. Well, <laughs> Mr. Peabody, glad to see you. Have a cigar. Thank you uh, very much. Twins. I, I got the money for you. Okay, pal. Hand over the money. The, the money? Yes, the, don't tell me again you haven't got the combination. <laughs> Shucks, Horace knows the combination of that lockup. Like it's his own birthday, <laughs> Horace. Sure, but... Uh, it Come on, step on it, that... Taylor. I've got to catch that train. But I, I just remembered something. The uh, safe's in a, is jammed there. There's something wrong. Uh, the lock, what? I've got to fix the combination. To get a locksmith. You don't need a locksmith. Oh, but I do, I do. Eddie will open it for you. Sure. There ain't nothing to it. A baby could open it. It worked fine before. Before? Your old man open it. Sheriff, get the sheriff. Sheriff? We don't need no sheriff. Nobody's gonna heist this door with us around. You said it, Eddie. Horace, I just remember what I forgot to tell you not to forget to remember. Waldo paid up his bill. He sold the painting to Audrey O'Connor. Thousand dollars. The money's right there in the safe. There you are. I'll be running along. So long, Horace. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Waldo. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There you are, Mr. Peabody. Count it if you please. We don't want to have any mistakes. Eight, nine, ten, one thousand. Uh -huh. The receipt, if you please. All right, there you are. There you are, sir. One thousand dollars. A lot of money to take home in the dark. Horace, I think I'll just leave this in the safe for the night. Oh, no. No, not, nothing doing. I don't want to have any responsibility. Goodbye, Mr. Collinsby. Here, uh, just a second, young fella. Will you do some business for me? Why, sure, for the usual fee. Well, uh, this money don't rightly belong to me. Would you take it to New York and pay the big dig tractor company? You can collect your fee from them. What? Yep, they was going to take my tractor. Own three back payments. This thousand makes it mine. If you want us to pay the money in New York, why don't you ask us instead of having me come way up here? Well, I don't know. I never thought of it, I guess. You never... Yes, sir, Mr. Follinsby. And if we can be of any further service, don't fail to get in touch with us. Well, so long, everybody. Gotta get that train. Don't take any wooden nickels. If you don't mind waiting around a little bit, we can give you a lift back to New York. Yeah, we'd like to take you for a nice long ride. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, there you have it. The story of a thousand dollars. It arrived in Silver Creek at noon and left again at nine that night. 
And in that short time, it solved a lot of problems. Maybe that whisk room would sweep away the depression. It brought a young couple a bright hope in the future. And the thousand dollars bought a portrait, a symbol of permanence and security for a wavering marriage which had been headed for the rocks of vain pride and misunderstanding. It helped an old skinflint pay off his back rent, but it didn't square his debt to his maker. It saved the inn from the auctioneer's hammer, and it started something between a couple of old hearts you'd have thought too tough for Cupid's arrows. And while that money had nothing to do with Ab Follinsby having twins, it did save his tractor. And strangely enough, that money didn't belong to any of those people, but Ab Follinsby. And maybe it didn't belong to him. That's quite a story, Uncle Ed, but uh, what became of the gold? What gold? The gold you said was in these boxes in 33. Oh, we went off the gold standard, and uh, it was a crime to hoard gold. They used it for filling teeth, when they could find teeth to fill. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> uh, well, I was just thinking what a joke it would be if we went back on the gold standard and they made you turn in all that cash. <laughs> they could do it, too. Anything can happen. Ed, you're, you're absolutely right. Well, what should I do? Take that money in the bank and put it back in circulation. Didn't you get the point of my story? That thousand dollars circulated. Money is like blood. No good unless it's circulating. You're absolutely right. Jim, Jim, let me out of here. I'm gonna put this money in the bank. <laughs> Hooray for Mason. <laughs> I wish everybody would do that. <laughs> well, goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Uncle Ed. <laughs>